if we solve the AI safety problem, mm -hmm. as we've talked about, and then uh, you, Max Tagmark, who has been talking about this uh, for many years, get to sit down with the AGI, with the early AGI system on a beach with a drink. Uh, <laughs> what, would, what, what, kinda, what would you ask her? What kind of question would you ask? What would you talk about? Something so much smarter than you. Would be would you I be afraid? I knew you were gonna get me with it, like a really zinger of a question. That's a well, good one. Would you be afraid to ask some questions? No. So you, I'm not afraid of the truth. <laughs> I, I'm very humble. I know I'm just a meat bag with all these flaws, you know. But yeah, I, I, I have. The, the, I, we talked a lot about Homo sapiens. I've really already tried that for a long time with myself. Yeah. Just so that is what's really valuable about being alive for me is that I have these meaningful experiences. It's not that I'm have what I'm good at this or good at that or whatever. There's so much I suck at and so you're not afraid for the system to show you just how dumb you are. No, no. In fact my son reminds me of that <laughs> pretty frequently. <laughs> you could find out how dumb you are in terms of physics, how little yeah, how yeah, little yeah. we humans understand. I'm cool with that. I think I think um so I, I can't waffle my way out of this question. It's a fair one, I mean, it's tough. I think, given that I'm a really, really curious person, that's a really de a defining part of who I am. I'm so curious. Uh, I have some physics questions. <laughs> <laughs> I love to, uh, I'd love to understand. Yeah. I have some questions about consciousness about the nature of reality i would just really really love to understand also i can tell you one for example that i've been obsessing about a lot recently so i believe that so suppose tononi is right so suppose there are some information processing systems that are conscious and some that are not suppose you can even make reasonably smart things like gpt4 that are not conscious but you can also make them conscious here's the question that keeps me awake at night Is it the case that the unconscious zombie systems that are really intelligent are also really efficient? So they're really inefficient? So that when you try to make things more efficient, which there'll naturally be a pressure to do, they become conscious. I'm kind of hoping that that's correct. And I, do you want me to give you a hand wavy argument for yeah, it? Please. You know, like, In my lab, again, every time we look at how a, how these large language models do something, we see that they do them in really dumb ways, and you could you could make it make it better. Uh, if if you uh, we have loops in our computer language for a reason, the code would would get way way longer if you weren't allowed to use them. Right? It's more efficient to have the loops, and in order to have self reflection, whether it's conscious or not, right? even an operating system knows things about itself, right? The, uh, you need to have loops already. I, so I think this is, I'm waving my hands mm -hmm. a lot, yeah. but I suspect that uh, the most efficient way of implementing a given level of intelligence has loops in it, self-reflection can, and will be conscious. Isn't that great news? Yes, if it's true, it's wonderful. Because then we, we don't have to fear the ultimate zombie apocalypse. And I think if you look at our brains, actually, uh, our brains are part zombie and part conscious. When I open my eyes, I immediately take all these pixels that hit my ret on my retina, right? And I'm like, oh, that's Lex. Mm -hmm. But I have no freaking clue of how I did that computation. It's actually quite complicated, right? It was only relatively recently we could even do it well with machines, right? You get a bunch of information processing happening in my retina, and then it goes to the lateral genicular nucleus in my thalamus, and the, the area V1, V2, V4, and the fusiform face area here that Nancy Ken Wisher at MIT invented, and blah, 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 blah. And I have no freaking clue how that worked, right? It feels to me subjectively like my conscious module just got a little email saying face facial processing uh, fit, task complete it's lex <laughs> yeah and I, and I just go with that right yeah. so uh, this fits perfectly with tononi's model because this was all one way information processing 
mainly. And uh, it turned out for that particular task, that's all you needed. And it probably was kind of the most efficient way to do it. But there were a lot of other things that we associated with higher intelligence and planning and, and so on and so forth, where you kind of want to have loops and be able to ruminate and self-reflect and introspect and so on, where my hunch is that if you want to fake that with a zombie system that just all goes one way, you have to like unroll those loops and it gets really, really long and it's much more inefficient. So I'm actually hopeful that AI, if in the future we have all these very sublime and interesting machines that do cool things and are aligned with us, that they will be at least, they will also have consciousness for the kind of the, these things that we do. That great intelligence is also correlated to great consciousness or a deep kind of consciousness. Yes. So that's a happy thought for me because the zombie <laughs> apocalypse really is my worst nightmare of all. It would be like adding insult to injury. Not only did we get replaced, but we friggin' replaced ourselves by zombies. Like how dumb can we be? Uh, that's such a beautiful vision. And that's actually a provable one. That's one that we humans can uh, intuit and prove that those two things are correlated as we start to understand what it means to be intelligent and what it means to be conscious, which these systems, uh, early AGI-like systems will help us understand. And I just wanna say one more thing, which is super important. Most of my colleagues, when I started going on about consciousness, tell me that it's all bullshit and I should yeah. stop talking about it. I hear a little inner voice from my father and from my mom <laughs> saying, keep talking about it because <laughs> I think they're wrong. And, and, and the main, way to convince people like that that they're wrong if they say that consciousness is just equal to intelligence is to ask them what's wrong with torture or why are you against torture if it's just about you know these these particles are moving this way rather than that way and there is no such thing as subjective experience what's wrong with torture i mean do you have a good comeback to that no it seems like suffering suffering imposed onto other humans is somehow deeply wrong in a way that intelligence doesn't quite explain. And if someone tells me, well, you know, it's just an illusion, consciousness, uh, uh, whatever, you know, I uh, would like to invite them to next time they're having surgery to do it without anesthesia. Like, what is anesthesia really doing? If you have it, you can have it local anesthesia when you're awake. I had that when they fixed my shoulder, right? It's super entertaining. Uh, what was that, that, that it did? It just removed my subjective experience of pain. It didn't change anything about what was actually happening in my shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. So if someone says that's all bullshit, skip the anesthesia is my advice. Uh, this is incredibly central. It could be fundamental to whatever this thing we have going on here. It is fundamental because we're we what we feel is so fundamental is suffering and joy and pleasure and meaning and that's all those are all subjective experiences there uh, and let's not that those are the elephant in the room that's what makes life worth living and that's what can make it horrible if it's just a bunch of suffering so let's not make the mistake of saying that that's all bullshit and let's not make the mistake of uh not instilling the AI systems with that same thing that makes us um, special. Yeah. Max, uh, it's a huge honor that you will sit down to me the first time uh, on the first episode of this podcast. It's a huge honor you sit down with me again and talk about this, what I think is uh, the most important topic, the most important problem that we humans have to f face and hopefully solve. Yeah, well, the honor is all mine, and I'm I'm so grateful to you for making more people aware of the fact that humanity has reached the most important fork in the road ever in its history, and let's turn in the correct direction.